Hey, Ben from Ben's Backwoods here, and today I'm going to take you guys on a little uh, tent tour. I'm excited. I just got a, uh, a Snow Trekker uh, 9x11.5 uh, base camp model, and I have my 4-dog um, Titanium Ultralight 2 uh, stove in there. So I'm going to take you guys uh, kind of around the tent, inside the tent, take a look at uh, what I'm going to use, I think, for a layout, how much room you have. Uh, try to answer some of the questions that, that I had myself before purchasing this tent, so stay tuned. So here is a quick look at the stove all folded up. There are four lengths of stove pipe in there, if you can see those, and a 90, and the uh, spark arrester. Everything full, everything slides inside this stove. Shut it down here, and as you can see, the legs fold up. And what you've got is a 12-pound uh, titanium box that has the ability to keep you warm and uh, cook food, boil water. Uh, fantastic piece of equipment. Highly recommend to the stove. So definitely if you're interested in a, uh, a lightweight um, stove. And the nice thing with these stoves is they won't rust. So they will pretty much, I don't know if they'll last forever, but they're going to last you a lifetime for sure. So definitely check these stoves out at 4Dog Stove. So first off, I'm going to take you guys outside of this tent. Uh, like I said, this is a uh, 9 by 11.5 uh, Snow Trekker uh, base camp tent. Uh, talking to Dwayne, he said this is one of his more popular models. I can see why. Um, I am six foot two, and having a headroom in a tent, um, it's kind of tough to, to find when you're my height. And these base camp models, I believe are five to six inches taller than, let's say, their standard uh, short wall or their crew models. I've owned a, uh, a 10 by 13 crew in the past, and I would definitely say that this tent has more usable space. This tent is, I think, three pounds heavier total, but having the uh, 28 inch sidewalls is what I'm giving you the picture of right here with those tw those little pickets right there those aluminum pickets in there I believe they're 28 inches so that gives you a 28 inch sidewall and I believe that sidewall uh, gives you a lot of usable space we'll kind of get to that when we go on the inside uh, you can also see where the stove pipe comes out of the side here it kind of comes out at an angle in the front um, which now that I have the stove set up in there I think it's a really uh, neat feature and kind of keeps your stove um, kind of, I think the way I'm going to run it is kind of tucked away in the corner there. Um, so I want to show you guys the side, the, uh, the sidewalls here, the pickets, and a couple staking options. This first picket here you can see I've just got it tied to a sapling there. Uh, it's always a good plan when um, when you've got saplings and stuff like that available. It makes setup quick and easy. Uh, this second one here over, I've got this one you can see this uh, stake to a, uh, a sapling uh, that I pegged out. I made like about a two foot long stake and pounded that down into the snow. Stake that off. You can always you can always do it. You can bury uh, logs. That's kind of like a dead man type situation too. Um, but that works well. The snow right now it's uh, middle of March and it's wet and heavy and probably a good foot thick here. Um, this third one here, I used a snow stake. I got these from Dwayne years ago, and it's like the, the USGI kind of angled aluminum. So here we are on the back of the tent here. Uh, you can see at the peak of these things, they've got a, a little vent that you can pop open, which is nice when it gets really warm. You can pop that open when you're heating. Um, down here, we have one guy out point and there's a little one of these aluminum pickets in here and uh, uh, a cord that grabs a hold of that and pulls it out and guides it out that gives you uh, uh, quite a bit of room on the inside so that's kind of your your one rear guy out point um, you do have a snow skirt all the way around the bottom of this uh, certain times you could tuck the snow skirt on the inside and like you see that tab down there at the bottom you can guide that out with a with a tent stake there's there's uh, tabs on all on all the corners to guide that out um, in the winter you can generally put the snow flap on the outside and cover it with snow uh, this was just kind of a quick setup this is the, I just got this tent and I wanted to set up so actually kind of here's one of the other sides here. of the tent and you can see I ran the uh, there's a convenient sapling in place here and I ran both those guy outs 
right to that one sapling, which made it easy. Uh, the last guy out back here, I ran that down into another uh, snow stake down in the ground. Let's see if I can get you a picture of those snow stakes, if I can pull one out. So here is the front of the tent. You can see the, uh, the vent at the peak. Uh, you can see where the stove pipe comes out on, on the, the angle there, and that is the uh, four dog titanium uh, uh, wood stove. I think it's the Ultralight 2. I'm not sure about the name on it. I've had this stove for I think about 10 years now, so it's probably one of the earl earlier ones. I don't I don't know when he started building those, but I've had it for quite a while. Super happy with it. Um, this tent weighs about 26 pounds and for the actual usable space and headroom that I'm getting out of it, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, the, so it's still very, still very much of a light, lightweight enough tent to snow trek with, to pull on, on a toboggan. There's my toboggan over there, snowshoes. And um, for two people, no problem. You know, this has got tons of room for two people. So you could, you could sleep more on the, on the ground. I'm gonna use this as a, it's kind of a base camp tent and also as a trekking tent. Uh, that titanium stove, complete with stove pipe and everything, is about 12 pounds. So you're looking at 26 pounds for the tent, 12 pounds for the stove. On a toboggan like that, it's like you're not pulling anything. It's super lightweight. So um, you can see there's two stake out points, two guy out points for the, the front of this tent. Once again, if you had saplings, convenient place saplings, it'd be, you'd be good to go there. I just use those same uh, snow stakes. So you can see the door here. I opened uh, one side of it up, opened the whole flap. You kind of roll, roll the door up and you can uh, conveniently kind of tie it here and it keeps this door uh, open. That's just one half of it. It's got a full length zipper. Actually, it's a double zipper. So if you wanted to uh, zip down from the top to vent a little bit, you could also. Uh, but it's got kind of this, uh, kind of this neat round opening there at the base. Um, so yes, you could tie both the doors wide open for easy in and out. And uh, when you're really trying to uh, cook food or boil water fast, that wood stove's blazing. Sometimes you need to have the doors open, even in, in below zero temps, just to uh, keep from roasting yourself out of this thing. So uh, you can see I've got two of those, uh, I think mine are the travel chairs. There's a Helinox, there's a bunch of different brands of these chairs. But you can see the back of that chair is about as tall as the sidewalls there. Um, probably even a touch lower, a couple inches lower. So with those chairs, you kind of lean back in those chairs. Um, so you could have them where they're sit is where they're sitting is nice uh, for me. Like I said, I'm six foot two, so I need a little more room. Um, so we're talking 15 inches from the wall, maybe a foot from the wall. Um, and you can sit in there and have headroom and your head's not bumping up against the side of the tent. So to me, that was a really nice uh, feature of the head walls. Um, I will take you inside of the tent now. You can see I've got the stove set up in the corner here. And what I'm liking about this right now is that I've got, I'm giving you a view through the entrance. Through this entrance here, I can walk straight in and straight out of this. If someone's sitting down in either of these chairs, I'm not gonna bump into them. I'm not going to bump into that wood stove right there. You could be cooking on here. So I've got freedom to walk in and out of this thing without um, having to move around and have, you know, if people are sitting down or you're, you're, you're running that wood stove, there's no chance you're going to you're gonna bump in anything. So having that, that access of in and out easy is important to me. So bring you guys inside the tent here. Uh, like I said, I'm 6'2", uh, and my head does not hit the peak of this thing. Let's see if you get, give you guys a little uh, little view of that. So like I said, I'm 6'2", and my head is not hitting, hitting the peak here. I've got enough room to actually walk around quite a bit in here um, without having to crouch down. So um, for me to be able to stand up, change your, change your clothes, um, do other little odds and ends, uh, having that headroom uh, is gonna be really nice. So that's definitely important to me. So here we are. Um, my thinking on this setup and the layout is the back back wall here, uh, which is nine wide. This is going to be my bedding area. Um, whether I chances are I'm going to run run a bed full length this way, if I want to run 
uh, one this way and another one in the corner here if you want to run two cots having these short walls is going to be great for cots uh, but chances are it's going to be my girlfriend and i and we're going to take up this this back area uh, with two people and probably have our heads in the corner here leave some extra room for storage at the, at the foot and if i'm uh, sleeping closer to the wood stove here there's a chance i can kind of crawl out of bed just a little bit and feed this stove if needed i'll also be able to set a chair right in front of the stove in between the stove and the bed and tend the stove boil water cook food that type of thing so having the uh, being able to get get at that bedding area and keep it in the back um, i think it's cool out of the way and then at the same time you've got your bedding area back there i can still have kind of your living room area up front here um, the way these walls are uh, with in the corner you can see this with the the, the wood stove kind of heading out here on, on the on the corner here uh, also makes a really nice spot for one of these chairs tucked away in the corner makes that gives you a lot of uh, usable space it's out of the way of the doorway so you can come in and out of that door just fine and you can put a little uh, put my wanagon down here with some you know keep your beer on top of it or your cooler or what have you and uh, another chair here so you've got two chairs you've got basically your living room set up and last but not least the wood stove here this is the uh, Don from four dog stove his titanium stove I think this is the ultralight two I don't remember what model this is the larger titanium stove and this stove system is about 12 pounds with the pipe uh, i couldn't be happier with this stove this thing is fantastic uh, these stoves are really really close to being airtight when you shut down this when you shut this door here and you've got a way of of adjusting your your uh you know your damper there to let air in or out it's got a little screen in there um, on the inside of this stove, he's got a baffle underneath that uh, the exhaust pipe. And that baffle, what it does is it gives you a hot spot on top of the stove for boiling and cooking. But that baffle also keeps gives you a level of efficiency for uh, for you know it's gonna gonna limit the amount of heat is is just flying right out of your uh, stove pipe, and it's going to make it uh, give you the ability to cook cook and boil water easier. And it's a, it's a safety issue as far as having that baffle in there. I feel uh, really kind of limits the amount of uh, large coals and chunks that could get sucked up into your chimney and you know maybe end up on the outside of your tent. Um, so yeah, this stove, freaking fantastic. Legs, those legs fold up on it. Um, all this stove pipe collapses and fits on the inside. Uh, these titanium stoves, like I said, super light, super strong. Uh, they kind of got a cool color to them when they this one's kind of bluish when they start burning they can they can you'll see some red spots on them they get hot um, but yeah basically very very airtight very safe um, to keep it lightweight the damper coming out of this thing is just a a slit in the stove pipe there and a little uh, titanium damper so you kind of ha hang this thing out here when you're when you want maximum airflow when you want to shut that stove down drop that in and seals it off so um, like I said you can kind of see the way the stove jack is coming out of the corner here I feel like this is how I'm gonna run the stove in here uh, the stove is parallel with your kind of your your door coming in so I've got plenty of space behind the stove for firewood and odds and ends plenty of space behind the stove for firewood I usually line the firewood up underneath the stove and keep it from melting down um, but yeah overall this this uh stove in this tent i'm really happy with the layout like i said i can walk in and out of this door without bumping in to that stove or getting too close to it people can be sitting down in these chairs kind of a living area and uh not be in the way of the stove or someone that's you know wants to move in and out of the tent and plenty of room for multiple different uh so here we are in the outside of the tent and you can see the stove pipe running through that uh, jack there so the titanium stove pipe and this thing's going to come up and i'm using don's uh kind of cap spark arrestor type thing on the end um, i very well may put a uh, another 90 degree elbow on there i had wind blowing right into this thing uh yesterday and it it, I could notice it a little bit, but it didn't. Uh, it still drafted well, 
Um, but putting a, uh, putting a 90 degree elbow here, facing the elbow up, um, is something Don taught me that would uh, mitigate, um, basically a, a pipe coming up straight vertical is going to uh, um, deal with the wind in a much better fashion than, than, than probably in this, but this worked really well. So I'm happy with that. Uh, like I said, this pipe here is basically, I've got a sapling that I just drove into the ground here. It's got some deep snow, just drove that thing on the ground. Had a little Y on here, it doesn't need to be super strong. And I wrapped a little uh, bailing wire around it. You could use uh, two poles, two scissor poles is what I normally do, tie them together with some type of cord and then uh, lash the pipe to it with, uh, with some type of uh, picture wire, bailing, bailing wire, something metal. And basically that props that, that, uh, that pipe up. A nice thing about this too, I've seen people running pipes almost vertical out of these tents and you, you could kind of do that, put the stove really close to the walls. If you wanted to put a heat shield behind your stove, you could probably do that. But I, I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna leave it the way it is. I like having, Dwayne recommends uh, 20 inches of clearance around that stove and I think I've got plenty um, right now and I've got plenty of room to tent. So um, having that pipe coming out at an angle like this, I feel like it's probably might even be a little safer, might be safer on the tent, you know, if you do get any sparks or coals coming out of this thing, um, that's gonna, you know, it's just a little further away from the tent. So um, yeah, so, so hope you guys enjoy this and enjoy taking a look at this thing and the uh, the view of it and the, the layout. These are kind of the, the questions I had before I purchased one of these. Well, that was the video. I hope you guys enjoyed that and uh, maybe learned something. Uh, do me a favor, like, subscribe, follow us. I've got links down below to my website, bensbackwoods.com, our Facebook, our Instagram. Thank you.